world this is what's up 290 and uh, I in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys kind of my telescope setup in response to the success of my every planet in the solar system footage video I thought I'd do this video because because uh, um, that video absolutely exploded it's become the most popular video on my channel and I just wasn't really expecting it so uh, um um, a lot of people wanted me to do a sequel, and well, there's not really much I can do in terms of a sequel to that video because it because I showed you guys every planet in the solar system. I showed you everything I can possibly show you. So what I thought I do I do instead is you know I thought I'd do a video, sh kind of showing you guys a telescope setup and kind of explaining what's a good setup for. Scope and camera setup for for viewing and also for taking pictures. Now, before people get too harsh in the comments, this is my first attempt at doing something like this. So, if the footage, so if the if the footage seems if the video footage seems a little not that great, then please excuse that. But like like I said, well, this is my first try, so it may not be it. You know, there may be some kinks. But without further said. Without further ado, let's go. So this here is the first telescope I've had. It's a Celestron Astromaster 70 millimeter uh, refractor telescope, and this is an extremely, extremely beginner telescope. It has no tracking system, no, no capable, no electronic or tracking capabilities whatsoever, and. It's it can it's only really powerful enough to see a, to see a, out to Saturn or so. I bought I got this tel this telescope costs about a hundred dollars, and this may be a good telescope to try with to you know to try with to get your familiar to get to get your maybe to get yourself familiar with the sensation of looking through a telescope, but you won't but you know this thing is. This thing is not at all even really usable for astrophotography because it can't track pictures, and you have to be and you have to be keeping and you have to keep most of your concentration to to, to moving the telescope around to keep to keep the planet or stars that you're looking at in the in the scope to begin with. But with that said, it is a it is a pretty decent beginner's telescope. So maybe give it a shot if you've never operated a telescope before. Yeah, something like this a shot if you've never operated a telescope before. And and uh, you know and you maybe try using it to find Ju to manually find Jupiter's moons and Saturn before you move on to something that's a little bit more advanced. So this here, this thing here, is the telescope I've been using for the past two or three years or so, and it's the scope I filmed that uh, that solar system video with. This thing here is an absolute beast. It is, it is a Celestron Next Image 8-inch Smith Cassegrain telescope, and it's the absolute best. This thing can can film. I, I've managed to see every planet in the solar system, from Mercury all the way out to Neptune, via this thing. And also, you can perfectly crystal, crystal clear see things like Orion Nebula and Bode's Nebula, and um, Christmas Tree Nebula. I had to think of the name of it, name of it for a second. And you can see basically anything that you could possibly ever want to from from this telescope. It is extremely powerful, and it's got a good balance between it's got a good balance between power and not being a pain to move outside. Here's the rundown with the bigger the big and the bigger the bigger the telescope you go. And uh, well, for one thing, the the bigger you go, of course, the bigger image you're going to see when looking at planets and stars, and uh, in the in looking at space objects. However, what's also to take into consideration is that one, the bigger the telescope, the more difficult it's going to be to move, and also the 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 bigger the telescope is, the more and more the more the distortion cost that's in the Earth's atmosphere is going to disrupt your is going to cause blurry images and disrupt your viewing because 
the more well, the more powerful your telescope is, the more the more the the atmosphere it's going to see see in between it and the planets and stars you're trying to film. But on the other hand, but yes, of course, the bigger the telescope is, the further you're going to be able to see, and the bigger images you're going to be able to get of objects that are far off, like planets and stars and things like that. This telescope, of course, has a tracking system on it. Has a tracking system on it as well. If you align it with three stars that are in different positions in the night sky, you can then easily use the tracking system to, fi to find planets and star constellations that are currently above the ground. Not only does this make make find finding objects much less of a pain, but also it's better for t trying to take pictures and astrophotography. Because you don't have to portion a con your concentration into keeping the telescope in, in a good position to take the photo. And of course, things like a Skyris camera, Skyris camera can be plugged in, can be plugged into the eyepiece and then plugged into a, to a laptop to, to, for photography. Now let's get into my set, to my preferred setup for astrophotography and taking pictures. So, this is what I use, use to film the footage of the planets. It is a Celestron Skyris USB camera. Now, the price, the exact price of these will vary depending on what size you're looking at. Generally about between one to three hundred dollars depending on how many millimeters in size. But what this camera can do is it can, is it can plug in, it plugs into the eyepiece of your telescope and then you plug it in via USB port to a computer. And then you can use software like SharpCap or iCap to capture photos and video from it. From it. One thing that's worth noting about these cameras is that they're not powerful enough to capture stars. You can only really capture planets, footage of planets such as Saturn and Mercury and Jupiter and like the, and like the planets that I captured in my solar system video. Yo, know, to take pictures of star constellations, you'll need to get something like a DSLR camera, and that's a big jump. Those can cost like two to three thousand dollars, I believe. So, so a lot you have to invest a lot of money if you want to if you want to invest if you want to take pictures of star constellations. But what one of these cameras can do for you is is enable you to take photos and video of things like Saturn's rings and Jupiter's moons. The best thing to use with these device, the best type of computer to use with these device is a Windows laptop. And let me, is a laptop that runs Windows. And let me get into why I say that. Because, well obviously you want a laptop because the camera has to be plugged into a computer and, and plugged into the software via USB to be able to take photos and video. And, and you know, you don't want to drag a bit, drag a big, desktop computer outside to stargaze with you to have something to plug into the USB and you want something that runs on a battery too of course also you preferably a Windows laptop well because most so, most uh, most of the uh, the software that works with these cameras runs exclusively on Windows such as iCap SharpCap and all the big name astronomy astrophotography image ca and video capturing software will only run on Windows it won't and won't run on Macs although I suppose a, a Mac a, an Apple Mac OS X laptop that has a, a Windows virtual machine or Windows partition on it is fine as well so with that said that's about it for this video I hope you enjoyed like I said, please don't try not to be too harsh, as this is my first attempt at doing something like this. So it may be a little rough drafty. But if you did enjoy the video, leave a like, comment, subscribe. This is what this is what's up 290, and I'm signing off. Have a nice day, and I'll see you next video.